Hey guys, my name's Lisa Sears, and I want to tell you about my day to day. Um, actually, I'm just recording it for me so I remember it, but if you want to listen to it, that's fine too. If not, I don't give a shit. Bear with me, I have three dogs. If you hear them in the background, again, I don't give a shit. They're my dogs, they're my life. I love them. Um, and yes, I like them more than you, but today was an extraordinary day. Um, totally different than anything I had actually expected. So, good friend of mine, um, we'll just call her Suzanne, got married today. And um, got married to a cop. Not a lesbian cop, though. A thespian cop. It's a boy. And he's a thespian. I've never heard of such. I mean, I've heard of lesbian cops, but not thespian cops. But that's besides the story. That's not the story. Um, so... It was out an hour away, out on the other side of town. And I was running late because I couldn't even, I mean, I just rolled my sleeves because I couldn't get the buttons to work. I couldn't button the top button of this. And I'm like, shit, I'm just going. Um, and I get there, drive past the place about 10 times before I said, screw it, I'm turning it in here, even though it says the Bridal Life Church, which I know she's not getting married in. And I was like, up, oh, there's cop cars in this lobby, er, parking lot. And I was like, this is it. And I see this barn over there that's all lit up. And I'm like, I bet that's where they're at. And so I park and I'm like, well, I guess I got to walk over there. And I'm like, get my cane. I'm like, let's go. I can do this. Get out, start walking across the parking lot. Get to the street to cross to go up the hill to this barn. And I was like. Yeah, not today. I'm not going to make it today. Not today. So I turned around. I was like, I love you, Suzanne, but I got to go. This uh, In my head, I'm going, there's no way. I'm just going to go on home after an hour drive, not being able to find it. I'm sure they're married by now. I mean, because I'm late and everything else. Dog. Told you. But um, I went back and got my car and was like, I'm gonna have to go home, leave. So I got in my car and I'm like, I can't, I can't leave. I, I'm, I've gotta be there. And um, I got in my car and was like, screw it. I'm gonna just go down the emergency road to the barn. So I get in the car and then this van comes down the road and um, slows down and I was like, oh, I think it's a shuttle. And I stopped and, sorry, the dogs are going nuts. So I stopped and uh, pulled up next to him and he, I said, are you the shuttle? He's like, yeah. And I said, good, because I didn't know what I was going to do. I was about to go down the emergency um, vehicle drive. And he's like, well, I would have got you. And I'm like, well, you'd have had to get me because you weren't stopping me. But anyways, I got in the van. He was super nice. He helped me button my button. Then we pull up and I see the stairs. And I'm like, shit. In my head, I'm going, I'm not doing this. Ugh. And he comes around. He helps me up the stairs. And I'm thinking, they're already married. They probably already kissed the fucking bride. And so I, was, I went up the stairs. He helped me. And, and this lady opened the door and gave me, asked me my name. And I said, Lisa Sears. And she gave me a name tag that said Table 11. So I sashay in, not really sashay, but with my cane, you know, pimp walking. And I'm like, okay, I'm already late. And she said, they're waiting. And I'm thinking, okay, now all these fucking people think they're waiting on me. And so I'm trying to kind of move quick across the room as much as possible. When you don't walk very well and you have a cane, that's not really that possible. And I mean, I kind of tried to hide, you know. But the bow tie, I think, made me stand out or maybe the pink hair. But besides the point, I was trying to get to my table and like one was over here, four was over here, five was there, 11 was there, seven was over there. And I'm like, I, I took me forever. I wandered around that damn place looking for my table. And I sit down, finally. And uh, after the ceremony, which was just amazing. And... It was absolutely 
amazing ceremony and beautiful. And the guys walk down the aisle to Star Wars theme. Uh, come on. Can't get better than that, right? I mean, besides, what would you expect from a thespian? Anyways, so again, off the subject. So I sat down at my table, and there were four people sitting there. There was um, two kids and their parents. And they looked like they may have been Pentecostal or some type of religion or something like that. And I'm like, guess she sent me here because she doesn't like you. And they're like... And I'm like, I'm kidding because, you know, most people, you know, wouldn't want to sit with me. I said, so she must be mad at you. And they just laughed. And they said, we think she's mad at you. I'm like, oh, touche. So then after they get all their pictures done and everything else, they overcome two more people to sit down next to us. Man sat to, sits down next to me and then next to him is a woman, which I assume is his wife. I give no fucks who it is. I don't know because I didn't know, okay? I really didn't care who it was. I thought, ha, she sent me here to be entertainment for these straight-laced people, which I was like, she, I, in my head, I'm thinking, Suzanne really doesn't like these people because they seem all religious and shit and sits me with them. And um, so he introduces himself and, and everything, and he goes, how do you know, Suze? I said, well, me and Suzanne were on ChristianMingles.com with the Women Seeking Women section, and he's like, oh. And I'm like, and who are you? And she, he said, I'm Suzanne's dad. I said, I'm just kidding. We met at a bar playing poker. And he's like, oh. I said, the first time I met her, she walked in, and she said something smart-ass to me, and I was like, Fuck you. You're my new best friend. I mean, when a straight woman that's hot walks in and says, suck a dick to me, I'm in love. And since she's straight, I'm never going to date her because that's not in my wheelhouse because my wheelhouse is, well, I got really small wheels and really not a house for them. But anyways, so I was like, she's my new girlfriend. And she would always play girl crush for me and everything. And I think she really did have a crush on me for a while. But, you know. Anyways, so Suzanne's dad was, it was sitting there and everything. And then I said, so who are you to this woman sitting next to him? And she said her name. And I said, oh, yeah, you're the stepmom, aren't you? And I said, you guys live up north, don't you? And he's like, yeah. And I said, oh, I've heard about you. And he's like, oh. And I'm like, I'm sorry, she must really not like you to sit me at your table. And he just started laughing because it was a joke, really. I mean, I was just making an assumption. I would have said that to anybody, even if they would have been, I don't know, any type of person. I would have said the same thing. But once I realized who it was, I thought, game on. I'm going to give Suzanne a wedding present. So, my wedding present was <laughs> just being me the whole time. And um, they had said something about her husband being a cop. And I said, yeah, that's his stripper outfit. And they're like, mm, uh, yeah, as far as we're aware, he's an actual cop. And I said, mm, I think that's just what he dresses up as when he strips. And they were like, I'm like, I'm just kidding. He is actually a thespian cop. <laughs> Sorry, that just is hilarious to me. Because um, normally I say lesbian cop, but this is the first time ever saying thespian cop. So, anyways, um, kept talking and stuff, you know, and, and stuff. And, and just being me and making them giggle and laugh, you know. And, and even though they were kind of, I think, a little scared of me at first. I don't know why. Um... I think maybe it was the bow tie or the hair or the fact that I was so open and gay. Um, but so I, uh, we're just, I was just bantering with them and stuff. And the stepmom was, yeah, you could tell she wasn't thrilled about everything. So of course she was my 
plan of attack per se. It's like last night when it was a different show where people weren't all there just to listen to comedy. They were looking at their art and everything and you had to take command of the audience, right? So they would listen to you. Even if they didn't want to, you had to kind of make them. Well, that was my goal, to make her listen to me. Kind of indirectly, just cause she needs to learn and not be so naive, I guess. So I told Suzanne's dad and stepmom that, you know, I always was like getting apologized for before my friends would introduce me like, oh, Lisa, she, yeah, but she is super loyal and we love her to death, but she's, yeah, you just, you just have to bear with her. And now it's, I say something they're like, eh, she's a comedian. And I told her dad and stepmom, I said, you know, and it's funny because I could walk up to a 90 year old woman and say, suck a dick and be like, if somebody would go, ah, she's a comedian. And they both were like, you know, the stepmom didn't quite laugh, but she kind of snickered a little. And Suzanne's dad did laugh, you know, and I was just being me um, the whole Most time. Of the I felt like I was in the movie Aladdin, you know, from back in the day because... They made this kids movie, but it wasn't just a kids movie because it was also for the adults with the humor that the kids didn't get, but the adults did. And so it made it so both of them wanted to go and both of them enjoyed the movie, which was ingenious in my opinion. That's what I felt like I was in tonight is that type of setting because there were thespians, um, her husband and his brother that had jokes and her brother and new brother-in-law's toast. I almost pissed myself. I was laughing and crying so hard. He was so funny. I thought he was a professional comedian. I lost my shit. And they were just like sitting there. Hmm. I am crying, I'm laughing so hard. My stomach hurts. I am seriously trying not to piss myself. And they're just, they're a lot, most of the room's sitting there going, hmm. And then half the room's sitting there laughing. It's just like that same thing with the lad. But anyways, so that's how I felt tonight. But it, it's just crazy because I was just being me and cracking them up. Matter of fact, the stepmother, I went and got dessert and I set it down and she acted like she was going to grab it. And I said, listen, bitch, I'm not scared to stab a bitch or cut a bitch. Don't mess with a fat girl's desserts. And she laughed, you know, they don't have internet at home. And I said, why not? And she's like, we don't need that there. And I said, well, I see who wears the pants in this family. Doesn't she, sir? And of course they laughed because I'm a comedian and yeah. So <laughs> Suzanne's stepmother came over with the green beans that they had um, from amazing, amazing food too, by the way. And um, these green beans were the flat ones, you know, the fatter, that flat ones. And she sat down and she goes, are these peas or green beans? Did she really just ask that? I said, they're peas. And he said, I've never seen a flat green bean. And I said, um, he goes, we grow all kinds of them. I said, well, that's because you're growing them and not getting them at the store. <laughs> and then his brother, the one with the two daughters that looked like at the table, the four of them, says, we grow those in our garden. And I'm like, Peas? I said, she thought those were peas. No, they're not. But um, it was just a hilarious night. And I was looking for Suzanne's mother. And I asked one of the girls that was, was in the wedding. And she said, over there. And I was looking. And this woman that she was pointing at had gray hair. And I'm like... Have I been talking to the wrong woman the whole time? 
And she's like, no, over there. And behind that woman, I was just like, shit, I had been talking to the wrong woman the whole time. I thought I knew who she was. But, um, so anyways, I, uh, um, don't know what I was saying. Ha! Not frozen. Um, so, to kind of wrap this up, I mean, there was more. It was an amazing wedding, and I lost my shit so many times. I can't believe I didn't piss myself. Seriously. Because it was some of the most fun I've had. And... It was almost like it was a set with with her family, you know, that were the good, don't say much, and very live on the farm, don't have internet, don't cuss, don't nothing. People. It was kind of like it was a set with them, and it, I nailed it, that's for sure. But I had to see my Suzanne before I left, and um, I went over and said congratulations to her husband and, and, and told his brother that, I want lessons from him because he was amazing. But um, I wobbled on over to Sue's and gave her a hug. And she said she loved me so much for coming and it meant so much to her. And me too. And she goes, I've got to tell you something. My aunt and uncle came up to me. The very Christian, very conservative people that they are. And they said that you know, they were shocked that she sat me with them. And she's like, I know, but I had to figure out the seating and... Ugh. So, I went over and told Suzanne... Ugh. No. Go. So I went over and told Suzanne goodbye and I was going to head home and that I loved her and thanks for inviting me and she lo told me she loved me and that she was, it meant so much to her that I came and she said that her aunt and uncle came up to her when they were leaving and said, I can't believe you actually sat her with me and she's like, yeah, well, I had to figure something out and it was kind of, I had to think of this, and then I had to think of that, and it just, that's where it ended up. And they're like, she's like, I'm sorry, and they're like, no. She is amazing. She loves no matter what. She is her no matter what, no matter what. She didn't, she didn't care that we necessarily don't like what she is. She just was herself the whole time, didn't change. And that's that's the most important thing, just to be yourself. And yeah, I, I do it with comedy a lot, you know, but I met this little girl that's about eight years old and her name's, um, well, Ava. Didn't know if I should say it, but, um, and she had a tie on at the wedding. I went up to her parents and I said, you don't know me, but I know you and you're amazing parents and thank you. And I got to know this little girl and I bought me a new t-shirt that said, be beautiful and the U was in, that was Y-O-U and it was in rainbow colors and it stuck up brighter, you know, and stuff and stood out in bigger letters. And I went to buy me one and I was like, I need to buy Ava one because I told her to, she's beautiful and she needs to stay who she is and be who she is and never let anybody tell her any different. And her parents said, we let her dress herself. She's already said she wants to marry a woman. They did the um, dance where they have the men on the one side and the women on the other. And without skipping a beat, she goes, mom, can I go over there? And her mom was like, yeah. And I said, just stay who you are. I mean, when I was eight, I looked just like her. Did I know what it meant? No. I mean, I got called a dyke in the cafeteria in my freshman year, and I was like, thanks. 
wasn't until a little bit later I figured out what that was. And I'm like, yep, you're right, I am. Big old homo. But Ava already knows at like eight years old. And I think that's amazing. She's not going to have to go through the bullshit that a lot of us have had to over the years. And I got a text from her tonight and um, it was so cute and it, it melted my heart. And she said, you know, thank you for the package. And I got it and I love it. And, you know, maybe we can, can talk sometime or, or I can text, you know. And um, it was just... It melted my heart, and I, I sent her I re sent her a reply back, and I also sent her a pin, which I don't have on tonight um, because I was stressed about getting there that I almost always wear, and it's a ribbon for Orlando, and it's just the gay pride ribbon um, that says Orlando on it for the people whose lives were lost, and I sent her to that because I want her to know that we're not out of the clear, but if she keeps being herself, more people are going to understand it. Just like I made a joke to her dad and stepmom that said, you know, about my LBGT joke. And I said, you know, I don't get it. And, and I said, so that's why I do the joke because a lot of my straight friends are like, what's that mean? And I'm like, I don't know. Because I said something to a woman. I asked her if she's lesbian and she said, I'm queer. And I was like, okay. And then I asked another friend, and I told her, you know, she's married to a uh, trans man. And I said, so are you a lesbian? And she goes, no, I'm considered queer. And I'm like, I don't understand that, so I don't expect you guys to understand it, because I don't. And I crack up that my straight friends are always like, what does this mean? And I'm like, I don't know, guys. Sorry. I'm older. I don't know. Ask somebody under 30. Or 20 even but I just I think I may have educated him a little bit at least especially from what they said to Suze and Suze had me in tears it meant an awful lot because she's just she was like I love you so much for just being you and she said thank you and I, the little bitch made me cry, moral of the story, so she can fuck off. Just kidding. I love her to death. Um, it, it just, so this bottle of cream soda means a lot. I'm not drinking it. It represents a night in my life that meant a lot. And I told a very Christian woman that, if she touched my, tried to touch my dessert, I'd cut a woman. I said, I'll cut a bitch. I'm not scared to. <laughs> but anyways, I don't know. Uh, I don't care if anybody watches this or not, and it's so messed up and everything else. But um, just wanted to give you my thoughts. And I hate writing. Words are hard. So, but as long as... Everybody, I don't care who you are, just keeps being themselves. I think the world is going to learn more acceptance. And, and you know, just because they don't like me didn't mean they didn't love me. Anyways, look at me on social media. It's Homo Sears uh, or Homo Sears Comedy on YouTube. Um, check me out. I do stand up, I sling jokes, and sometimes I change very conservative, narrow-minded people's minds about people. And you can too. Just just be yourself. I mean, everybody else is taken. And well, be yourself unless, you know, you can be a thespian cop, then be a thespian cop because he got the hot woman. Deuces.